Hi Aries, welcome to your May 2017 tarot reading. For all my new viewers, my name is JJ and I'm glad to see you guys here. Thank you so much for all your support, I really appreciate it. So you guys, uh, I've been wanting to record this reading since last night, but I couldn't. yeah that Aries energy has just been lingering since last night so and I think that's why I feel rather awkward actually I don't have any Aries in my chart but when you study the signs you start to appreciate the differences in the qualities that they exhibit and especially to see different placements right so like if you're a sun in Aries that's quite different from having an ascendant in Aries which is quite different from having a moon in Aries and to see how your sun and ascendant signs also um, complement your moon sign is very interesting So even though I have a very cold sun sign, I have an extremely passionate moon sign and a very intense rising sign. The intensity of my rising sign possibly works very well with the passion of my moon sign, but then people come to find it very awkward because my ego sign, my sun sign, is very cold, right? So Aries... This is interesting. And I'm not so sure what to make of this reading for you guys, but I'm doing my best here. I also apologize for the delay. I guess I have to apologize to pretty much every sign out there, but if you knew what was going on, it's just a blessing that I'm even here right now, like able to give this reading right now. No excuse, there's no, you know, no excuse. I know, I know, I have a responsibility. I should be more responsible in delivering these in a timely manner, but I'm going through so many changes right now. I will come back with a personal update at some point. I'm not looking at these. They didn't flip. Okay. So Aries, I wanted to talk about, because there's also a reason why I started to talk about sun signs, rising signs, and moon signs, because I think that you guys would benefit a lot from knowing, the, understanding more the difference in what, in what each sign has to say for you. Um... Like that, perhaps Aries like tends to ask more about this. Like, what is the difference between our sun sign and our moon sign? Um, what should we pay attention to, for example, when we're watching for our moon sign versus our rising sign? Your moon sign is the emotional component of your life. It's how you gather your feelings and your moods. Now, there's something... Also important that you should keep in mind when it comes to feelings, moods, and emotions. Feelings are fleeting. They are sensations that come and go. Your feelings can be altered from hour to hour. Feelings are affected by the stimuli you come into contact with. Moods, on the other hand, are much uh, longer lasting. Moods can occur for weeks on end. Emotions 
are the fundamental basis of both moods and feelings. We would neither we would not have feelings or moods if it were not for the way that we define our emotional state. And an emotional state can last up to months and years. But of course there are intricacies and it gets a bit more complicated because then we go into discussing things like happiness, contentment, satisfaction, and also other extreme emotions like depression, for example. Depression that may last for months. Not the feeling of being upset or sad, which can last for a couple of hours and fluctuate, but it is a more constant. The more constant a sensation is, the more it moves up that scale from being a feeling, a mood, to an emotion. So, Aries. I bring this up in your, in your video and not in other videos because Aries is a very directional sign. You are very straightforward, very hot-tempered, very fast-paced. But above all, you know, the keyword that stands out the most for me is straightforward. And that means that you usually won't let feelings get in the way of the decisions that you make. The only feeling that can truly affect you, I feel, is that of anger. Once you are aroused by anger, then the whole world needs to watch out for that, basically. Because right now, and for the better part of the past 100 years, if I can say this, if you will allow me to say this, Aries has pretty much acted as a ruling, excuse me, a ruling race. We depend on your leadership. Not every part of the world depends on your leadership, but the majority of the world depends on your leadership right now. Your leadership skills and how you take people forward, even entire countries and cities forward, is in turn very, oh dear, very important in determining how a community, I'm not sure how this came out, so I'm going to put it back in the deck, but for reference, it's the Eight of Pentacles. So it's important because it also depicts our communities and societies very differently. So, Aries, still very interesting reading, honestly, and full of ups and downs, actually. So, yeah, when you are a sun in Aries, you are a very directional sign, and you usually know what you want. You charge for it, and you lead. You are a leader, hardly ever a follower. When you are an ascendant sign, when you are an ascendant in Aries, although a sun in Aries is a native when it comes to leading, an ascendant in Aries, I feel, is more likely to gain positions of leaderships. Those positions seem to come their way a lot more easily than for other signs because that is the aura that you exhibit to the world. That is the image that you give off. It is not how you necessarily believe yourself to be, which is the sun sign, the ego, but it is what you project to the rest of the world. It is the first impression that you make when you walk into a room like, wow, that guy or that woman is a real leader. They look like they can run an entire company, an entire nation. Um, you can't help but notice their presence, kind of like a Leo as well. Uh, Leo and Sagittarius. Actually, a, fire signs in general have 
that intense streak to them that is very, very hard to ignore for other people. But you are intense in different ways, of course. And the way that Aries, I feel, really stands out is in your confidence to lead and achieve things. So, and you don't even need to have all the facts to do this. You're just very smart at getting your hands on the information that will uh, help a group of people, perhaps that you may be in charge of, do their jobs a lot better. This doesn't mean that you have to know the A to Z of each person's role or be an expert in their uh, aforementioned role, but it's the demeanor uh, that a leader has that allows a leader to teach other people how they can be the best versions of themselves. So this is where you garner your strength and depending on how good natured you are, you can use this power for good, you can also use it for evil, you can use it for personal gain, and you can also use it for the gain of others around you. I just, before I really get into your reading, I know I've been talking for a while now, it's all because I, I really wanted the cards to come out. Before I get into your reading, I just want to note uh, a few cards that seem to have popped up in other readings that I've done so far for May, and that is the Ten of Swords, the Ten, uh, sorry, the ten, of, the ten of Wands and the Ten of Swords. The Eight of Wands, the Ace of Swords, the Five of Cups, and I believe one other sign got this Judgment card. I'm just bringing this to your attention because I know that a lot of you cross-watch for other signs and for other people as well, so you may have a already have a good idea of where these cards have appeared in other videos, whereas it's actually very difficult for me to keep track because I'm recording for all 12 signs that I start to confuse between them. But it's just very, uh, it's good to note these things because then you can start to relate your reading to the readings of others so that if there is any mention of people in your readings, such as this King of Swords, who's reversed, and this King of Pentacles, maybe a relationship will start to develop, and a deeper, greater understanding, or even more so for understanding your own chart and your position where you stand. So, for example, um, just because you may be a sun in Aries doesn't mean that your moon or your, your rising sign is not an air sign, in which case perhaps you will resonate very much with this Ten of Swords, which I remember very clearly popped up in the Aquarius video. Uh, and Swords is an air-like quality. Uh, otherwise, you may have a lot of earth in your chart and be quite the entrepreneur or in, or investor really good at handling money, in which case this King of Pentacles might be a secondary energy that you are taking on and not necessarily another partner that we're talking about here. So, let's get right down to it though, shall we? Um, the very first row that I see here is not a very not a very easy uh, line of events. I don't want to call it a series of unfortunate events either though. It's just you can you I can feel that the energy is just very difficult here and it starts to easen up as we progress through throughout the month. So this might be energy that is already leaving us from April, but which we come into with May and depending on how much work we did, which is this ten of wands here, how far we got with it, it's the final stride, then we will advance in an easier way. 
However, I do get the impression that quite a few people may have struggled with this energy of the Ten of Wands and perhaps were not able to make it to their final destination here because it may have required more finances on your part, which is beyond your control in some, in some circumstances. Um, not everyone gets to complete a goal or a project within the set time frame that, that they've put out for themselves due to situations like loans, bank loans getting in the way, uh, postponing of receiving your your a check for example your monthly salary may not have come in time um, in the very worst case scenario you may have suffered another loss that has prevented this from from being possible and I say this because following this card and following the ten of wands is this ten of swords which usually tells us that we start to give up because we feel like we are, we are unable to move forward anymore. We feel like no matter how much more we try, we are cornered. We're cornered and do not know how to respond even mentally speaking on a mental note. It becomes difficult for you to collect and gather your thoughts here. And when you try, the harder you try, the more you're kind of resisting this Ten of Swords, which needs to take place in a way. And you enter the Seven of Cups state, which is actually a very difficult position to be in, perhaps even more so than this Ten of Swords, which is why I'm saying in some cases it's easier to surrender to this energy and just let it pass rather than force it. Because then... You immerse yourself in the world of emotions, which, if I'll be frank, Aries, it's not your strong point. It's not always your strong point to feel so deeply here. Because like I said earlier, I really do get this impression, hey, and it's just an opinion that I formulated. Uh, based on patterns that I've seen um, that the one emotion that drives you towards success perhaps more than other signs is anger because when you get anger angry and you are aroused that way then you become an unstoppable force because you are gods of wars so you kind of thrive on that energy. No one should pit off, piss off an Aries without seeing bullets come flying their way. And okay, I don't mean it literally. I really don't mean it literally. Don't go off on a shooting spree or anything like that, Aries. But I just mean that you can also shoot bullets with your eyes. Like your eyes can turn into laser beams. And it will be very difficult to suppress the way you feel if you feel angry then you, it starts to fester and brew uh, all sorts of resentment even within you. When you have the Seven of Cups though, then this is looking at illusions as well and being unable to control the way that you manage your emotions this way and not, and again, it, you, you lose that strength of knowing how to progress forward because there is no longer a direction with the Seven of Cups here. There's no longer a direction. These are painful cards for an Aries to see puff up because you are direction-oriented signs and the only way is forward, especially with an Aries. The only way is forward. You hardly ever want to look back onto the past. You, you dare I say, aren't even always here in the present because you're just so good. Uh, strategic thinkers of what needs to happen tomorrow, basically, and the day after that. But when you become hot-tempered, charged that way, then you might come to make decisions that not only harm you but they may harm the people around you and because it can be in the heat of the moment 
then chances are that you get this right, that the decision that you're making is correct, lowers. Because in this card, only one cup holds gems and jewels and success, in other words. The remaining six cups here are uh, objects that we would much, or, or, or things, you know, that we would much rather stay away from here. There is like a one in seven chance, though, that in the heat of the moment, you make the right decision. For you guys, it could be that you make this right decision, actually. Or you take a decision, I can't tell you what this decision is, and I'm not even, it doesn't even have to be a decision, okay? But it can be. I'm just alluding to a decision because of this two of swords here that's right beneath the ten, the ten of swords, which tells me that this might be the brunt of your issues right now. Um... Whatever it is that is bothering you or disturbing you involves this world card here of completion and coming together, which we see happening anyway, thankfully, because of these two ten of um, the, the, these two tens here. But this completion may have been interrupted and delayed, as I said before. may have been interrupted or delayed. So this world card is coming. But this world card, the fate behind the world card may have been slightly altered depending on how well you handled the last couple of weeks. What the outcome was of this seven of cups as well. Rapid decisions may have been taken here. Uh, your judgment may have been influenced very much so by impressions of others, messages and opinions that have come your way very, very quickly. So quickly that when paired up with this need to move forward, like you really want to get out of this state, you end up making a cutthroat black or white, yes or no, do or don't, swim or sink decision with this two of swords here. Here, it's difficult to say if you made the right call. It's quite difficult to say that you made the right call, though, um, because the story doesn't conclude here at all. It really doesn't. The whole reading ends on this Five of Cups note, which another sign got as well. Another sign ended on the note of the Five of Cups too. So perhaps your disappointment, if such a disappointment sh should occur, is, is, isn't separate to, isn't separate from the disappointment of another sign. It might be shared disappointment here, but it's not forever and it's not the greatest loss. You still have so much going for you. These two chalices behind this character are there to remind them, if only they would turn around, that not all hope is lost. Just because you're crying over spilt milk here, thankfully in all my readings, Fives are very temporary. They may feel intense and heavy in, in the moment for a few weeks or so, but you know, after that, you get over this pretty quickly. And it doesn't mean that you forget what it is that you've lost or what it was that make, made you disappointed, but beautifully so, you begin to, you, you have the ability to also see it in a different way and in light of these two cups that are still standing here where these two cups may represent the future and what waits for you in the future perhaps also with regards to what it is that you you may have lost in the present and this is still energy that is coming it's not energy that has already occurred or it's energy that 
you you are beginning to feel at this time and as a result of harboring this sort of energy it shows itself with more prominence towards the end of the month or um, energy is fluid so I say the end of the month but it will all depend on how quickly you progress through these energies and your will is your way you can easily alter the outcome as well to me it's almost as though this Nine of Swords is an incomplete project or incomplete goal. This might be the source of your angst if you suffer through the angst this month. It can be the result of incompleting that last stride here with the Ten of Wands because again, I don't think that some of you were able to just complete whatever it is that you needed to complete, like an idea or anything really. You just stopped. Maybe you thought or, or questioned if it was even worth it anymore if it was worth giving your time, investing your time. It's important for me to say, oh, I can't get this card up, you guys, but this, okay, with the Six of Pentacles, I should say that time is money as well. So time is a, a currency, and especially if you are lacking time or you feel like you don't have enough time in the day that you have limited resources and you need to share them as wisely as you possibly can how can you can't be there for everyone at the same time you need to divide your days divide your hours according to the priorities that stand for you which might be something very difficult to do because you may depending on other placements in your chart maybe the kind of person who is a perfectionist and wants to dedicate most of their attention and time equally to each person. So when you're with a person, you want to give them your all. And when you're with another person, you also want to give them your all. You don't want to feel like, you don't want other people to feel like some are more important than others. But this can be very difficult to do perhaps in your situation at this time, or a part of you might be holding back, is a bit reticent to invest more currency. And again, currency is time, can doesn't have to be money, to invest uh, in a person, perhaps. Because maybe a part of you doesn't see it's moving forward or for whatever reason it can't move forward it's been halted beyond your control again because the vibe I got really initially I just to remind you is a situation being out of your control in this case and you kind of just have to accept it, but it might be very difficult for you to accept. May I say, though, that... So it can involve these two people. One of these energies is yours, though. I really feel like one of these energies is yours. And I really have a feeling that this Ten of Swords is talking about your emotional capacity to relate. Your emotional capacity to move on. 
you might feel somewhat uh, apathetic or dead inside. So ap ap apathy as a result of this feeling dead inside. I'm sorry, by the way, I'm just going to say something. I know that the readings this month have been really dark and gloomy and all of that. I don't mean for it to be that way. <laughs> um, but I also don't believe in sugar coating, coating things. And you guys can certainly take this. Aries can take this. So I just say it as I see it. I really do. Um, so, so yeah, I just, I feel as though because emotions may not be your strong point, necessarily your strong point, that is why this Ten of Swords to me can talk about that. in addition to this King of Swords in the reverse here. Um, so, this King of Swords can be an air sign in your life whose ways, ways or struggles or feelings, struggles because they're reversed. They are reversed. Um, are rubbing off on you. Or this can be a person of... of of interest, of question, here in the reading. So you may be affecting one another, one another this way. Uh, this can be talking also about a shared business together. And it just, maybe one of you is not feeling as confident, or you're experiencing certain arguments that are not allowing things to uh, flow as smoothly as you would both like. Profits may not be as high as you both wish, and there is this question of whether or not it's worth continuing with your investment because you know that you're kind of approaching the apex of uh, development. What do I mean by this? I mean that you've begun to build some sort of foundation between the two of you or a, bus a business it can be, a project, a relationship. Um, something of value, right? But not too much time may have gone by already. So you started laying out the groundwork the stepping stones, you can still retract your effort to continue though. It's not like half, of, half a house has already been built that if you stopped now it would be a shame. You would lose a lot, especially if we're talking about like a mortgage or something like that. It's more like the grassroots have been laid. And depending on whether or not you wish to water your plants often and often, they can thrive, bloom and grow and turn into a very beautiful harvest, harvest and garden that will make this King of Pentacles, which may as well be your ego sign. It's an earth sign, Capricorn, Virgo, Taurus make your ego very, very happy, or you can decide to starve this foundation. This is, this, is, this is the decision we need to make. Yeah, this is the decision that you guys need to make. Do you allow this foundation, the groundworks, to be nourished and nurtured? Do you continue with this? Or do you put an end to it? Do you stop it? Do you halt it? Because you don't see the benefits in, in continuing. This Eight of 
ones in addition to messages that you may receive that can influence your perception in any way. These can also be seen as the arrows of love. So I choose to see this as a positive card that means that it usually means that a message is being sent with a lot of love, Aries. This Ace of Swords kind of popped up very randomly and it, it came out alongside the Five of Cups like as a secondary card here. And I really feel though that it kind of in a way clarifies the two of the Two of Swords and this Eight of Wands and it eases the impact of this Five of Cups, which it, again it's this is reversible, so this is not forever. I want you to realize that this person is staring at the cups and he is staring at the past. He is looming on the past, perhaps even parts of the present, which will not remain. The present doesn't remain. There's only the future. So they are looking backwards. They are not looking forward. And they're also looking in the direction of this judgment card. Why? Why? Because judgment may be flying around between you guys. Where no one really knows who is to blame for this. You know what I mean? But at the same time, realize that no good can come from pointing fingers either. Especially if there's really not much you guys can do about it. It does seem to be a bit of a black and white situation here. One that will start to have some color added to it as a result of this um, Eight of Wands where you realize it doesn't have to be, always, always have to be a black and white thing. It just feels that way now. That's really the impact of the Ten of Swords that's seeping down. It is seeping down onto this Two of Swords energy, which is also overlaying this judgment card here. So. It's layers upon layers of interpretation of how you are thinking about things. Like first you think, nah, -uh, nah, -uh, we're not going anywhere, not going anywhere, can't move, can't do anything about it, can't think, can't think, because if I think, I trip and I go to bad places in my mind and in my heart. For those who may have like a moon in Aries, this is particularly difficult. Your moon in Aries means that it's just not very obvious to you what you're feeling sometimes, which is why it might be easier to switch off, be apathetic, rather than be too upset or angry or too happy or whatever. You just choose to be neutral about things because you know like that thinking an excessive thinking is just not going to get you places. But like I said, it's layers and layers of things. So at first you, you're like, you can't do anything about it. And then you insist something must be done about it. And it's either a yes or a no. Again, swim or sink. Green light, red light, black or white. And you justify it with this judgment card here. As though it's your only way out to just make this decision Easy does it. Come on now, let's flip a coin, why don't we? Flip a coin and let the coin decide your fate, kind of thing. You realize though that it's not that easy. You realize that it's not that easy. On an emotional front, oh shit. Yes, I should have seen this earlier. Also, let me plug in my laptop. Still not on. Sorry. Why? There we go. 
can. Sorry about that, guys. So, I should have seen this earlier. But, this row seems to be representing your mental scope. This row is talking about your emotional scope. This is talking about all things 3D, money, investments, foundations, the home, bank accounts, bank statements, just, you know, business plans, on everything that you can see, touch, and feel, everything 3D, all material gains are in, are in this row. This row can be talking about spiritual, idealistic developments. So everything to do with your ideas, goals, spiritual development, psychological development, that's kind of separate from your mental development here. This is a bit of like the, the, the bigger picture. The bigger picture which seems to involve this uh, reversed king of swords here. And their effect on your life, just, just simply put, to be honest, this person, whoever they may be, can play a role in the development of your your, your psychosocial development. It's not easy to say, you know, this, this world card talks about a lot. It talks about psychology. It talks about spirituality. It talks about... Uh, reaching self-actualization. To reach self-actualization, one must go through several years of emotional development, mental development, growth, and only after you've laid down the, the groundworks, basically. All wise men see how difficult that journey is. Yeah, that's, that's how I'm seeing things. So we've, we've talked about how we've colored your mental processing here. Uh, emotionally speaking, it's all gloom and doom at first. Really don't know what to make, make of it. And like I said, one in seven chance that you'll see the optimism, the light at the end of the tunnel. You go from like this dark way of thinking to a more cutthroat yes or no uh, decision black or white to something that is more colored like so your emotions color your way of thinking now and influence the decision that you need to make and it no longer becomes as dark as a, or you know as easy to interpret as something yes or no, like something that you can just get rid of. It's something that will involve loss, pain, but it also involves a lot of really good times to come. So many good times to come. You just have to turn around and see that because that's the future that you ought to be walking towards. So it's not so bad to see your reading kind of end on this Five of Cups note because for now, okay, he's looking backwards but eventually because you are Aries really you will and by especially if you're a moon in Aries because emotions moon the moon rules your emotions eventually you will see that there's not much left for you to do other than for you to turn around and Enjoy the prospect of a future. So that was your reading. It was the longest so far. I hope you enjoyed it, you guys. I hope it helps in some way. Um... I'll come back in a few days with a personal update. Other than that, I will see you next month. Take care of yourselves, Aries.